Hello everyone, this is One Day at a Time podcast. It captures the challenges we face daily and what we learn or not learn from it. My name is Uche Agbai, or Sensei Uche. Welcome. We are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of One Day at a Time. My name is Uche Agbai, your host of this beautiful podcast. And this podcast chronicles my journey to surviving and beating cancer. Yeah. I hope you have been finding valuable life lessons that you can apply in your everyday life through this series so far. It will give me great pleasure to hear from you. Um, please, you know, my social media handles at Sensei Uche across all platforms. Reach out to me as we continue with another episode today. Today's episode captures a day in my journey where I was faced with making a, you know, a very interesting decision. Um, a decision I had dreaded based on my declining health status at the time and a decision which eventually led me to having my last interview which is the title of today's episode. So if you're ready, here I am. Hope you're ready. Here we go again. Enjoy. Okay, so the episode is titled My Last Interview. And like I said earlier, it's something that I dreaded doing because it signaled that I would have to stop working. It meant that, you know, it was the last year I was going to be on air as a radio presenter, then at City 105, uh, 1 FM on the Super Drive Time Show. The interesting thing is, I'd already started showing signs of illness at that time because I had done a biopsy, and the biopsy revealed that the tumor in my nasal region was cancerous. And so, you know, I started showing signs of illness and I couldn't hide it anymore. There was blood coming out of my nose, even though I didn't tell most of my colleagues. I think my MD knew at the time, my head of programs or my general manager also, both of them knew at the time. But the rest of my colleagues, I didn't let them into it because I didn't want to make the workspace dull. I didn't want anybody being emotional around me and, you know, having to... You just hide their feelings and all of that when they were around me. I wanted people to, to be as free as possible. I wanted them to go about their business, especially at work and on radio where if you're a radio presenter, you have to be in good spirits. You know, most times before you go on air, you don't allow things that happen in your personal life transmit into your show. You don't have, allow things happening in society. Um, even when they hit your car and all this kind of stuff, you don't get money, you know, you still have to keep up a good disposition you have to keep up a good mood or vibe like we say in this time just so that your listeners can have a great time because if you are moody on air imagine waiting your listeners with a face especially in lagos <laughs> and in nigeria we hear there is wahala on every corner so yeah so you have to be the one to you know give them a good time for drive time radio whether they're home or in traffic especially you just have to give them a good time on their way home okay so Coming to terms with this was very, very difficult for me. Like I said, trying to keep my life as normal as possible. And one of the things, you know, I always do use with work was shut everything out. So while I was still working and, you know, having symptoms and going through all that, I was using work to block everything out. Like once I come on air, you know, I'm all alive. I'm like, nothing is happening. There's no tumor. There's no cancer. There's, I'm not going for tests and tests and tests and tests. There's blood not coming out of my nose or I'm not feeling weak and all of that. So going to work was, I looked forward to it because it made my life feel as normal as possible. And I shut everything out and I could focus on it because of course I enjoyed, I enjoyed being on radio. I love it so much and it brings me so much joy and satisfaction yeah 
Okay, so but I had to stop. I had to go off air. I had to have my last interview. I'll let you know who the interviewee was at that time. But, you know, I also, at that point, was starting chemotherapy. It was taking a whole lot on my, on me physically. It was taking a whole lot on me financially. And also, it was taking a whole lot on me mentally. But I thank God for my doctor, surgeon doctor, Johnson Ukeje. He'd given me some sort of, you know, heads up as to the effect it will have on my body. That was also one of the reasons why I had to, you know, quit working because I couldn't go through the stress of working every day doing a 95 and then going through chemotherapy. Chemotherapy can be very toxic to the human body. So my doctor had prepared me as to the effects saying that it was going to be another thing entirely. So at this point, I had started trying to prepare my mind for what was to come as much as I could. You know, because when you're told that you're taking a drug that would <laughs> that would make you lose your hair. I don't want to say lose your hair. I'm always talking on your head. Every part of your body, brand new baby boy skin. <laughs> that was what happened. Like there was no hair anywhere. And yes, even around my privates, nothing. You know, that, that's the effect of chemotherapy. And of course, the other side effects where you get physically sick, your body's trying to, you know, now, well, medicine in its own blessing can be very, very annoying sometimes. So, yes, trying to bear in mind for all of that. And this day came, the last interview. Guess who was supposed to be on my show then? <laughs> None other than uh, the Tati BG King himself, the baddest, David Doe. David Doe was supposed to be on my show he was in transition that evening because I did it, I was on the drive time show from 4 p.m. So he was on transition after the show. He was supposed to head over to Jamaica because he had a recording, a video recording, yeah, with an artist, a Jamaican artist. So I had booked David Doe for an interview weeks back. We had confirmed the dates as I normally try to do just so that, you know, I keep a tight schedule and he was promoting new music at the time and who I didn't want to cancel. Like, I didn't want to cancel. I didn't want to do my last interview. And I didn't want to cancel. I didn't want to, you know, spoil the vibe. I had interviewed him a couple of times and it was always fun having him, uh, him in the studio. So as they say in showbiz, the show must go on. No matter what, the day of the interview arrives. Da da da. My last interview on air, I didn't want to spoil it. I was bleeding from my nose. Like, David, David came with his guys, of course, Asa, his manager was there, and his old, his whole team. I was bleeding from my nose in the studio, but nobody noticed. There was, there's a, there's this swiveling chair that we have in the studio then, or we had in the studio then, and I would just swivel, you know, turn around from everybody and just, you know, quickly wipe when I noticed that blood. Unfortunately, at, at this point, I'd gotten very, very good at sensing when blood was going to drip out of my nose. And that's just a very sad thing to say, but I'd gotten very good at it. So when I noticed that, you know, inside my nasal region, blood was, you know, about to pour out, I would just turn around, whip out a handkerchief or whip out some tissue and I'll wipe it and I'll turn around again, keep up the energy. Yo, David Alvara, you know, and we're playing music. We we're going back and forth with the conversation. And I was doing this just to. <laughs> Just to make sure I get the right type of feedback from him. It wasn't easy. I must say this. Because the tumor at this point, because of the biopsy, was growing rapidly. The doctor had said that and, you know, warned me that the tumor was going to grow rapidly after biopsy. You know, because the biopsy determined that it was malignant, that's cancerous. And after biopsy, when won't you touch a tumor, a cancerous tumor? It just starts growing and growing rapidly. So he had warned me and said that treatment was the next step. That, you know, once we do the biopsy, I'll give you a couple of weeks. You know, you search yourself out and work. Find out a place where you're going to have treatment. And then we start. Because if you don't start, it starts growing. It's going to grow in a way that it's going to start popping out from your nose, your mouth. Which it actually did. As at the time, I was preparing to go to Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey. And that's for another episode. So, yeah, in the studio, cleaning my nose, wiping the blood off my nose, talking with David O, enjoying the interview, something came up in my head. You know, I think it's the human part of me that 
just wanted to cry for help, to ask for help. I sat there in the studio, looked at Issa, looked at David O. At some point, David, David looked like he was just, you know, on concern with the interview. I think he was doing something on his phone. Maybe he was, you know. And then he came back again. So I said, how far now? You know, we go hard. And we continued. And I wanted to tell him that, you know, dude, I am sick. You know, this is what's happening to me. You know, I'm dealing with a cancerous tumor. I need help. I am broke. You know, because I've been using my own money and there was nothing. Help was coming in for friends. But you know how this a chemo session would be taking you over hundreds and hundreds of thousands of naira. And that's and I needed about six, seven sessions for chemotherapy alone before we even, you know, talked about radiotherapy. So there was something in me that was struggling, saying, Guy, tell him, Guy, tell him, tell him he could help. If you ask for help, he could help. I was struggling within myself, but I also wanted to keep it professional. I also wanted to stay professional. And I didn't want to spoil his own, I, you know, because we look at, we look at these people and we just think, okay, they don't have things that they're going through. And I can bet you, with someone like David, we probably had like a million and one people, you know, always has probably like a million and one people that are just begging and asking for funds. And I felt that it was legit, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't ask him. I didn't. It was hard because I fought with myself internally. But I didn't ask him. I just made a point. I said, dude, you're not going to make somebody uncomfortable with your own wahala. You're not going to unsettle him with your own problems. Just let him do the interview and let him go. Because how could I? It's, it's not his reality. It's mine. It's my reality. I had to keep it. I'm sure he has his own reality. And... Yeah, I'm sure he just wants to live his life. I don't know if that interview though, because um, I always love my interview, but and I'm very critical about myself. I don't know if that interview was one of my best work, considering everything I was trying to balance emotionally and mentally at that present time. Um, but I got past it. <laughs> I got past the interview, and I thank God that I got past that interview because after that, like that, my mind just switched to okay. Let's try to get things done. I tried to get well. After the interview, a part of me questioned myself as to if it was my last interview ever. You know, you know how when you just finish and you're like, okay, you are going for treatment next. You're not going to come in on air. You're taking a break to take care of yourself. And then some just like, what if this is your last interview? What, what if this is the last time that you ever get to sit? talk to a guest in the studio um flow with your your audience listen and you know that kind of cool we would say you don't know where they come from just <laughs> i was like wow you know wow what would you say of me like what would people say if this was my last day if i if i did this you know because like i said i was battling through a lot in my head what would be the impression that I would leave? Would I have left a bad impression or a good impression? What would history make of it? I know. I know. I love my job well. I love my job. And I also love making good impressions. But something made me realize that I'm more than my job. That even though I'm going through what I was going through, I'm more than that job. And if it was the last one, if it was the last interview, well... That was what the universal, that was what God wanted me to give out at that time. And that was how it was supposed to be. I couldn't go back to change anything, even if I wanted to, you know, even if I wanted to do things differently. I couldn't go back to change it. Just take the moment as it has come and gone and take the positives and take what you can from it and just move on. Move on. So from there, I moved on. I moved on into treatment mode. My last interview. <laughs> but thank God it wasn't my last interview, you know. I have been on radio after that, a different radio station, a lot of radio gigs. And right now, with Africa Business Radio on this podcast, one day at a time. And I've had guests also, yeah? So I'm still interviewing people. <laughs> so I guess in essence, I'm not asking anyone to, you know, follow my path. I don't, I'm not asking you to, especially with this episode, 
because go, looking at everything I've talked about, I'm not asking you to not. Maybe your path would have been to speak up. Who knows? Maybe your path would have been to to cancel the interview. You know, maybe your path would have been to have the interview and tell David and share what you were going through. But know that it's not the end. Like when I think about it, especially in relation to the podcast to one day at a time, it's not the end until you think it's the end. Like, and that's the thing about the mind. Once your mind accepts that this is the end, this might be, this is the last, not my sports. And your mind stays on it and focuses and hinges, um, on it. Then it, it would definitely be the end. It would definitely be the last. So no, whatever you're going through now, if you're someone going through something, if you're going through a tough time, um, if you're facing a challenge, I don't even like saying every time that you're facing a challenge, even if you're going through good times and you're like, is this the end of all the good times that we have? You know how, um, we can, your mind can be hyperactive where things are happening so good for you, especially me. And I'm not, and I start thinking, okay, how can I sustain this, this good life? How can I sustain this good spell? How can I keep this going? How can I, you know, just stay in this space? Because definitely we all want to just stay in a place of, um, goodness of, of success, of prosperity, of things happening as we would wish them to happen daily. Just know that even if that good time, you know, seemingly comes to an it's, it's not coming to an end. Your life still continues. There are ups and downs. There are good days. There are bad days. There are days where you fill up to it. And there are days that you have to really pump up your mind, you know, to fill up to it, you know, from the training and the experiences that you've had, you know, there's something I like to, like, I like to train my mind as to, to, you know, respond the way I need it to respond in certain situations. So it's not easy. It's a process. It's something that you get to learn over and over and over and even make mistakes while learning. So be as professional as you can. If you're in a professional situation, do your best. Life is tough. Yes. Life is tough, but just continue to do your best. You can only pray that you find and make the right decisions when you face your own challenges or when you get into your own places of success and good as you keep going one day at a time. Okay, guys? Woo! That's it for this episode. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for keeping company with me. Don't forget to follow me on all social media. My handle is at Sensei Uche. I will be delighted to hear from you. I, I am delighted to hear from you, all the messages that have been coming in. As regards this episode, previous episodes, and whatever it is that you want to share with me, if you feel like sharing, please go ahead and do that. So keep a date with me on the next episode. At this point, I'll say I'll see you next time and keep keeping it one day at a time. Bye, guys. Thank you.